uh, a warm welcome to one and all for this new channel, Swapna's Radio Info. So we'll go to the interesting case of the month, which I have seen in our department. Case number one, a 13 year old girl was referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis, with the history of shortness of breath, clubbing and cyanosis, clubbing and cyanosis. Initially, chest radiograph was done. So it shows a uh, heterogeneous opacity noted in the right lo lower zone. And adjusting the imaging contrast, a suspicious vessel noted, extended from the pulmonary hilum to the mass. Next, we did the ultrasound chest. So uh, this is a real-time grayscale ultrasound scan showing anechoic tubular cystic lesions with the posterior acoustic enhancement. On color Doppler, it shows a vascular structure with turbulent flow manifesting as mosaic-like flow pattern and perivascular color flow artifacts were noted. This is the spectral Doppler. 2D echo was done and it was normal. Uh, Transthoracic contrast echocardiography with agitated saline, also known as bubble echocardiography, is highly sensitive for detection of the right to left shunts. So it could not be carried out in our setup. Uh, CT pulmonary angiogram was carried out. Then next. So this is a plain CT chest in the mediastinal window. It shows a heterogeneous soft tissue opacity in the right lower lobe. This is CT pulmonary angiogram in the lung window. You can see the lesion very clearly in the right lower lobe. The lesion. So this is the post contrast. You can see the intensely enhancing vascular nexus here in this, in this uh, image. So this is the lateral segmental artery, which is measuring 9.3 mm. This is another arterial feeder which is measuring 3.7 millimeter. And this is the anterior segmental arterial feeder measuring 6.4 millimeter. So this is a dilated tortuous inferior pulmonary vein that's measuring about 13 millimeter. This is a CT pulmonary angiogram a video. You can see very clearly this vascular intensely enhancing vascular lesion subplural location in the right lower lobe. This is a 3D reconstructed image. You can see these are the two arterial feeders from the lateral segmental artery. Another is this is from the anterior segmental artery. This dilated is the inferior pulmonary vein. This is the vascular nidus. So this is a 3D reconstructed video of CT pulmonary angiogram. Same, we can see the arterial feeders in dilated inferior pulmonary vein. This is the vascular nidus or nexus. So observations were intensely enhancing lobulated intrapulmonary vascular nexus measuring approximately 6.3, 3.7, 4.2 centimeter noted involving the anterior and basal segments of right lower lobe. Two arterial feeders from the lateral segmental artery, one from the anterior segmental artery were noted and it is seen drained by the tortuous dilated right inferior pulmonary vein. Arterial feeder sizes uh, of lateral segmental artery measuring 9 millimeter and 3.7 millimeter and anterior segmental artery measuring 6.4 millimeter, approximately 2 millimeter away from the nidus. Uh, draining right inferior pulmonary vein measuring approximately 14 millimeter. So based on above observations, a diagnosis of complex pulmonary arteriovenous malformation was done. Coming to the case 2, a 28-year-old uh, female patient with a history of missed abortion came to the emergency medicine with the complaints of shortness of breath. And CT pulmonary angiogram was advised suspecting the pulmonary thromboembolism. So initially, uh, chest radiograph was done, both uh, chest radiograph P and lateral view. It shows heterogeneous soft tissue uh, opacity in the right lower lobe. Next, we did the ultrasound chest. It shows the uh, uh, anechoic tubular cystic lesions with the posterior acoustic enhancement. This is the color Doppler shows increase in color uptake, mosaic color uptake. This is a spectral flow uh, pattern. So on color Doppler, it shows vascular structure with turbulent flow manifesting as mosaic-like flow pattern and perivascular color flow artifacts from the pulsations were noted. Next, CT pulmonary angiogram was carried out next. These are the plain CT mediastinal window of the chest showing the soft tissue uh, opacity in the right lower lobe subplural location. This is the lung window in the both axial and the coronal view. You can see this uh, lesion very clearly here. This is a, a CT pulmonary angiogram. You can see the intensely enhancing vascular nexus in the right lower lobe. This is the uh, dilated inferior pulmonary vein. These are the uh, two feeders. You can see these red cursors. These are the feeders measuring 6 millimeter and 5 millimeter. Both are arterial feeders. This is the vascular nexus. 
Coming to the observations, intensely enhancing lobulated vascular nexus measuring approximately 5.2, 0.4, 0 0.7 centimeter, noted involving the superior basal and posterior basal and lateral basal segments of right lower lobe. Dilated right interlobar artery noted, and two arterial feeders, one from the middle lobe segmental artery, another from lower lobe segmental artery were noted. And it is seen drained by the dilated tortuous uh, right inferior pulmonary vein. The size of the arterial feeders being uh, middle lobe segmental artery measuring 6.7 millimeter and lower lobe segmental artery measuring 5.6 millimeter, uh, approximately 2 millimeter from the needles. Uh, draining right inferior pulmonary vein measuring approximately 11 millimeter. So based on above observations, a diagnosis of complex type of pulmonary arteriovenous malformation was made. Coming to the discussion, uh, pulmonary arteriovenous malformations, these are the rare vascular anomalies of the lung in which abnormally dilated vessels provide a pulmonary artery to pulmonary vein right to left shunt. They are generally considered direct high flow, low resistance fistulous connection between the pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins. So instance is 1 in 50,000 of all the cases more common in the women and adult age group, 10% of the cases being diagnosed in the infancy and childhood. The most common site of location being lower low, the subplural is common. Coming to the etiology, congenital is the most common cause. Hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, also known as osler weber Rendu syndrome, is frequently have the pulmonary AVMs. It is reported that at least 33% of those with single pulmonary AVM and at least 50% of those with multiple pulmonary AVMs have HHT. It is an autosomal dominant condition associated with the T length dictatia of liver in GIT in brain. Coming to the acquired causes, any prior surgery, trauma, infections like tuberculosis, acnomycosis, histosomiasis, mitral stenosis, hepatic cirrhosis as a part of hepatopulmonary syndrome, single ventricle cardiac repair, beta study diseases, example, thyroid carcinoma. So, pulmonary AVM as a part of HHT has a carries a poor prognosis. Coming to the classification, they can, they can be classified as simple, complex, and diffuse. Simple type seen in 80% of cases, it has a single segmental feeding artery and single draining vein. Complex type have a multiple segmental feeding arteries and single draining vein. Diffuse type is rare, it's characterized by the hundreds of malformations. And these pulmonary AVM are further classified into primary, secondary based on the cause already we discussed, and small and large based on the size of the lesion. Large if the size is greater than 5 cm, small if the size is less than 5 cm. And peripheral and central based on the location from the pleura. If it is within the 2 cm from the pleura, considered as peripheral location. If it is away, to, uh, away from the pleura more than 2 cm, it is central in location. So what are the goals of imaging evaluation of the pulmonary AVM? Does this patient really have the pulmonary AVM? How much is the shunt fraction? Does it need treatment? Depends upon the size of the arterial feeder progressive hypoxia, is there any pulmonary hypertension and also complications like neurological stroke, high output cardiac failure. Coming to the treatment, treatment option includes transcatheter embolization either with the coils or plugs and device transfer. Surgery, historically treated with the surgery priorly, either ligation of the feeder, segmentectomy or lobectomy. Treatment is indicated in the cases with a feeding artery diameter greater than 3 mm or symptomatic patients even if the size of the feeder is more than 2 mm. The risk of cerebral complication usually considered significant when the feeding artery of the PAVM exceeds 3 mm in diameter and may also increase in patients with multiple PAVMs. The 3 mm cutoff size is solely based on empirical data regarding the patients who never experienced such cerebral ischemic events below the cutoff size. Coming to the differential diagnosis, uh, first is vascular lesions always consider pulmonary artery pseudoaneurysms, pulmonary varics, fibrosing mediastinitis and veno-venous collaterals, hepatopulmonary syndrome, arterial collaterals, pehan vessels, meandering pulmonary vein. Non-vascular lesions, uh, granuloma very uh, most common, atelectic band, mucosine and ground glass opacity. So these are the references which we have taken. These are the articles which I have seen. Thank you so much.